Greetings, welcome, and good day. You are now tuned in to the 12th episode of the Season Vet Podcast. I'm so happy you could make it to another chapter of this show. This week, we're joined by a retired Navy senior chief with the wildest boot camp story I've ever heard. Sunita joined the Navy as a single mother in the year 2000 and retired as one of the last people in her career field in January of this year. She was one of the few people with her job to make it as far in rank as she did, but after being scheduled for back-to-back sea duty, her advancement to E-8 was undeniable. She comes from a long line of military service members. In fact, if you listen to episode 10, just fine, then you're already familiar with one of her trailblazing family members. Sunita wants us to believe that she is a gangster who found Christ. (laughs) And that's why she describes herself as somewhere between praise is what I do and knuck if you buck. She's a woman of the cloth, with a lot of great advice and positive affirmations. That's why I've named this episode after one of her quotes, and that is, We're all queens. Friend! How's it going? It's going well. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for having me over. Thank you for inviting me into your home. It is beautiful and it smells good and it looks good in here. Oh, thank you. Uh, for sure. Like, you are a woman who likes your things. I try. So, I think you told me that you wanted me to refer to you as Sunita. Mm-hmm. Is that your alternate name? Uh... I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's the real deal. It's the real deal. It's, oh. my, it's my real birth name, you know. That's what's up. I didn't know it when I first went to kindergarten, so then I discovered I had these other names. I go by a lot, so... I still don't know what to save you as in my phone. Like until mm-hmm. now, now I, I know, all right, that's, that's what she wants me to call it. Right, a lot of hats. What is your connection to the service? So I am a retired senior chief. Ooh. I just retired January 31st of this year. Come on. Second generation Navy. Come on. Uh, my dad was in the army and um, a lot of my family members were in the army. Grew up next to what's called, I guess, Fort Moore now, was Fort Benning. So <laughs> Columbus, Georgia, right next to the largest infantry base on the world. So I grew up seeing military, grew up dealing with military people and other military kids. And so I think I was just kind of destined to go into the military. <laughs> um, so that's 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 what happened. That's what's up. <laughs> Come on. Second generation Navy. Yep. You are... Correct me if I'm wrong. The second woman in your family to join the service. Yes. All right. Come on, legacy. Yes. Followed my aunt. Look, and we, we spoke to your aunt. She's yes. She gave me a good interview. I, yes. She's a lovely lady. Yes, she is. And she's tall and she's pretty. Like just so we're clear, like she's a nice looking lady. Yeah. <laughs> Does not, you know, you know, black girl. I, I know. <laughs> she don't look her age at all. No, she looks really good. She does not. And she look. She's got that hair together. Yes, yeah, she does. I'm a little bit jealous. All right, I'm, I'm trying. Look, I'm trying to get there. <laughs> I'm literally following in her footsteps all, all the way. way. <laughs> what did you do that to you? Okay, I'm gonna do that too. What else did you do? Okay, I'm gonna do that. Because it too. worked. Like it worked. She had a plan that worked. <laughs> and so I'm just stepping in her footsteps. Right on. So the Navy was that your first branch of choice? No. No. So like I said, my dad was in the army, and of course I grew up right next to an army base. I was in junior army ROTC. So I definitely want to go into the army. And I actually did join the army. What? I went to boot camp. Hold up. And my recruiter messed up my paperwork. I was going to go into the army reserves. She messed up my paperwork because the army's um, delayed entry program is a little bit different from the other services. And I don't know if this is still true, but it probably is. So the army allows you to go to boot camp between your junior and senior year of high school. Okay. And you come back, you do your senior year high school, and then you leave and go to like your AT or your follow on or your MOS training. Yeah. So that's what I was trying to do, but my recruiter messed up my paperwork and I was stuck in Fort Jackson for like four extra weeks because she had my date that I started school back wrong. So it took us a little bit longer to end process. And um, they were like, you're not going to make it through boot camp and make it back to school on time. So we're just going to hold you until, A, we try to figure it out. I really don't know what they were doing. I don't know if they were trying to figure out how to keep me or trying to see if there was a waiver. You know, there's always something on the back end. I don't know what was going on. I just know that they got me. I would say for free labor, but it wasn't for free because I got paid. Nice. Um, I was fitting boots, fixing people lunches for the new in-processing. So, like... (laughs) 
they had a whole <laughs> different section for in processing, unlike Navy boot camp where, you know, you in process and you do everything on the same base. They had a whole separate section. So I didn't even get to go to the, the actual boot camp training session. I was just in in processing the whole time. So, you know, fitting people for boots and make checking people in, you know, just doing admin work <laughs> while they got their stuff together. Finally got me a ticket, sent me back home. Wow. And um, I was in contact with my reserve unit. I called them, told them what happened. And they were like, oh, well, if you want to continue on the path, then you're going to have to go back to the recruiting station. And I was like, mm-mm. <laughs> so my aunt, who was in the Navy at the time, was like, I told you you should have went into the Navy. And I was like, you know what, auntie? You're right. And so the next time I went up to Mets, it was to join the Navy. <laughs> Navy sent me to medical a couple extra times, so it took me a few more times. It was real easy to join the Army. The Navy was a little bit more discerning. And they finally cleared me, left the boot camp, and then the rest is history. Yo, that yeah. is the wildest story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my I god, go crazy. So yeah, you, you just educated me because like I didn't know that you could go in between your junior and senior. Yeah, the year. army, and I don't know. I would have to check and see if any of the other services do that, but the army does it because I feel like their boot camp is well. All the boot camps are around the same amount of time, but. You could totally like leave right after you graduate, finish boot camp, and come home and wait for the next step. But wow. that wasn't in the cards for me, and wow. I ended up going into the Navy. I cannot imagine. That's uh, what's it called? Summer, not not summer camp. Uh, summer school for like high school. Basically, yeah. Wow. It's basically like so they just go to military form, summer school. Yeah, they just, yeah. they go to some military base, get traumatized for like two months, and then come back to their senior year, right? <laughs> to their like their current real life, and then right. I, I can only imagine the shock of like going through all of that, and then having to come back and like do like school, like right? Kid, like you're a kid, right? When you've been in this adult situation, right? Like I can totally, I can only imagine. That is crazy. What that what that would feel like? Because I didn't really go through the whole thing. I was just it basically what I was doing. It felt like summer camp. Basically, <laughs> I didn't really get to the meat and potatoes of it, so I was fine. But I'm sure other people were like, "What?" They were probably jealous that you got to do the admin work. Yeah, <laughs> and most of my friends that went into the army because a lot of us went into the army. Most of them didn't make it a career. They ended up getting out. So oh. senior. I'm sorry, senator. <laughs> It slipped. Either one works. Either one works. My bad. It slipped. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was, that's wild. Okay. <laughs> so, how do you feel about your time in uniform? Does any particular time period stand out to you? So, it was really rewarding. I can say that. And, of course, the times that stick out are definitely because I'm in the Navy. Is all the times that I spent deployed or out to sea. That kind of makes you... It made me, I'm sure it makes a lot of other people. So I was on shore duty, my first command, and my then husband was the one that went out to sea. We both couldn't be on sea duty at the same time because I had a child, mm -hmm. and then I had another child. Congrats. I was ready to go out to sea, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> trying to follow my auntie. I was like, I want to go on the JFK. They were like, mm, you can go to the shore duty in Virginia. Roger that. <laughs> Roger that. So, um, and then funny story, I had one of the army guys call me at work and was like, Hey, PFC green, because you know, my maiden name was green. And I was like, so PFC green doesn't exist. <laughs> this is petty officer Buckter. <laughs> and what can I do you for Sergeant? He was like, yeah. Um, so I got paperwork here saying that you were in such and such reserve unit. This is then the third. I was like, well, that didn't work out. I'm in the Navy. <laughs> He proceeded to ask me, how did I know I was in the Navy? Well, what, the hell? what? You call me at work. I'm totally in uniform. What? Right here it says U.S. Navy. Right here it says Bookter. So I'm pretty sure I'm in the Navy. Like, what the hell kind of question is that right? anyway? He was trying how to do be you... funny, and okay. it did not land. It didn't land. I was like, sir, you are wasting my time. What you need again? He was like, well, <laughs> I'm just trying to clear my rules up. And are you sure you want to stay? Yeah, I'm pretty much. <laughs> I was trying to go into the reserves. I'm active duty right now. Like, I can't just up and leave. Right. So, I'm stuck. I'm under contract. So, I can't go anywhere. And if I, even if I could, I wouldn't. So, I'm good. But thank you. Have a nice day. He so tried it. He tried it. He tried That's how that conversation uh -huh. went. But uh, I shut him down real quick. Good. He deserved it. Um, and so, short duty. And then I finally got to go to a ship that was a little bit traumatic because I was trying to go to one ship. And they wouldn't take me because I wasn't an E5 yet. And... My chain of command vouched for me. They were like, look, she's solid. She's going to be at E5 soon. And they didn't take me. And I ended up going to another ship. Because I'm smart. You know, you I are. knew I was going to have to go out to sea. 
just put me on an aircraft carrier. That's all I ask for. <laughs> I just don't want to be one of five. I want to be one of 20. Can I be one of 20? I can work with that, you know. And um, Wait, one of 20 women or black people? Wh- well, that's a different story. One of 20 people, period, in oh, the people. department that I okay. worked in or the division I would be in because, you know, I was the type of job that I was doing. Our divisions, when you go to a smaller ship, they're tiny. There's not a lot of us. And I knew that. Don't ask me how I knew that. But I just knew that. I think from all the other sailors that had came from ships, they were like, oh, this is really sucky. And then the ones that were on carriers were like, oh, it was great. So I was like, I want to go to an aircraft carrier. And then my aunt was on an aircraft carrier. So that's just yep. what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. So I already knew where I wanted to go, my path. Went back and forth a lot with a the detailer. They finally put me on the Theodore Roosevelt. Nice. America's Big Stick, TR, represent. <laughs> um, and that's really where I fell in love with the Navy. And that's where I was like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. That's what I said. So, because nice. being out to sea is so awesome. Like, is it really? There's nothing like it. There's <laughs> nothing like watching planes launch off of a floating <laughs> airfield in the middle of the ocean. There's nothing like <laughs> pulling into a foreign country and seeing this whole new world. I didn't need no passport. I didn't have to fly. Like, then I get perks because I'm here with the military. Everybody trying to be friendly. Um, <laughs> there's nothing like that. There's just, there's nothing that can really equal that experience. And then the things that you go through. And then the family that you build in that environment. So there's nothing like that in the world that, you know, I can think of. And so, yeah, I definitely fell in love with it. And I definitely was a sailor for sure. After I was stationed on the ship. So that was like... You know, my most decisive time in my career where, <laughs> you know, I was kind of running things because I had made E5 right after I got to the ship, by the way. So, right G-Dub, your loss. Because <laughs> um, I got there, I made E5. I was only the only one of the only females in the um, division. And I just ran the shop. I just ran shop, you know, because I was already a leader. Because he was the shit. And I was the shit. Period. And, um, you know, everybody... You know, I did what I asked them to do because I was because you were persuasive. Yeah, yeah, I was a persuasive leader, and you know, I was nice. People like me. You know, I'm not a mean person. People like me, <laughs> so people try. You know, because I go out of my way for other people. I usually get that in return. So. I've heard that from other people as well, yeah. and you know which people I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right on. Leadership, love it. All right, sing, ah, sing. You know Either what? one. Man, Either one. Come on. They both start with an S. <laughs> I'm not mad. No. <laughs> All right, Sailor Green. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm messing with you. <laughs> that was so crazy. But I'm, I'm, about to get, I'm about to get thrown out this house, y'all. It's okay. crazy when he said that. I was like... <laughs> How do you think your experience could have been improved? Um, Or could it have been? Did you have just a unicorn experience? So I, I'm kind of a believer in like destiny and I'm, I'm a believer in you get put in the situation that you're supposed to be put in at the appointed time in the appointed place. So I don't know if there's anything that could have, you know, just really made things that much more different. One of the things I do wish, like I don't have very many regrets, like, but one thing I do regret is not like as far as like managing my money and my funds because for to be the age that I was in the situation that I was I was making a lot of money were you and I was wasting it I know how much on, E5s make on Stop CDs well you got to remember when I first came in I was married okay so oh we remember both, remember okay. we were both in the military okay remember both remember. getting BAH come on both Wait, this was at a time when both members could get BH. I think now it's yeah, only so, one. Yeah, so no, no, no. Now. There's a difference in the BH that you get. So, um, because we had dependents or kids, you know, only one of us can get dependent BH, and the other person gets like without without dependents, which okay. is only like a couple hundred. It's really not that. A lot of people are like, oh, I can't wait till I get that BH with dependents. It's really not that much more money, especially when you really got <laughs> dependents. I need y'all to give us more money. Right, right, right. So, yeah. So, I mean, we just, we would do stupid stuff. Like, I mean, we were kids. So, we were, and he worked in a bank. He had like the financial background. Like, he cleared up most of our debt. Like, nice. he consolidated everything. Come but on. then he would go spend like $500 on video games. Balance. And we ain't have no, we ain't have no <laughs> real savings, no money market accounts, none of that, this you know. Like, so check to check? Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, we weren't really check to check because we had, we luckily we had like a lot of money in excess 
but we could have put more money to the side and better prepared for our future and we didn't do that and that that's really like one of my regrets because i was like dang when i think about the amount of money i would just go blow on cds she said cds yo i'm a music <laughs> head you know what i mean i grew up with my uncle with the double tape <laughs> the double tape deck in the car you know so i was like i can't wait till i can get some tapes like my uncle but by the time i came got the money it was cds so i was buying cds Hold and on. when i went back home he had cds and we would be comparing wait but, yeah. let me explain what cds are to uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. To uh, to anybody in X is our Gen Z years, like, right? Uh, to anybody born after the year two thousand, uh, yeah. C- CDs it stands for compact disc. <laughs> <laughs> these little, you know, there were these little round discs that you would put in yeah. a slot, sometimes in a car, sometimes they, uh, the disc for the gaming system. There, you but go. there was music on there. Come on, and sometimes <laughs> videos and, some- and movies. Look, okay. <laughs> There was music where you got your software for your game. <laughs> it was music on there. And we, we didn't really have music streaming. Right. We just had radio stations. And right. That was it. That's, so, that's it. Yeah. CDs was a big deal. <laughs> Look, and, and if you had a nice collection, you were man, basically a you DJ. Were the, you were the DJ at the party. I was right. the DJ at the party all the time. <laughs> Booked or bring your CDs. Roger that. <laughs> Because I, I had them all, you know what I mean? And, you know, my husband was Caucasian, so I had an eclectic, <laughs> eclectic, and then he introduced me to, you know, the Napster and all that. So he was, oh, he was <laughs> downloading stuff. Wait, did he give y'all his computer a virus? <laughs> It probably had a, you know, I was a computer person, so I knew, I knew oh, how to clean them right, up. Oh, that's right, Yeah, so I would clean it up. He was pretty decent with computers, too, so we kept it. But I'm sure it had some kind of virus, spyware. You know, I downloaded a couple spywares on purpose. We're going to talk about that. That's another, that's another chit-chat. But anyways. And look, y'all, CDs were not cheap neither. Like They, they weren't. They released $10 a pop for At a full least album. $10. And if it was a really good album, it was going to be 15 bucks. Yep. yep. You wasn't buying Janet for no eleven ninety nine, dollars nope. $10.99. That CD was going to be fifteen ninety nine. So, yeah. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> and you had a whole book. That is hundreds of dollars. Easy. Yeah. Easy. I mean, I was up to thousands. Lord. Senior. <laughs> Sunita. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about a time when you experienced something, either good or bad, that you know to be unique to you because you are a black woman. So one of the things that stick, well, I have a couple of things. Well, no, the black woman thing wouldn't be unique um, for the second thing. But for the first thing, we are in a, like a women's symposium, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, We had started this women's symposium at our coming in. And um, they asked, you know, each of us as leaders, I think by this time I was a chief. Nice. So they asked, you know, me to speak on something. And um, there was this one um, Caucasian female. We're still cool to this day. Like, I keep up with her. You know, she was, I think, actually, she was older than me. She was older than me. But she was a first class. And we were kind of talking about the discrimination that happens against black females. We were specifically talking about our experiences as black females. Mm -hmm. And she was shocked. She was like, almost like in disbelief, like, that doesn't happen. And I'm like, yes, it does happen. Right. You may not do it, but people definitely do it. I'm going to say she does it and doesn't know that she does it. Yeah. 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 So, it's so people, normal for her. It's, she yeah, it's definitely she, normalized. And she doesn't realize. She doesn't That's realize That's why she it. doesn't believe you when you right. say it's happening. And so, not, not to say that I was naive. I just, before I made Chief, I really didn't have those types of experiences because of the people that I was around, you know, there's always somebody African American in my chain of command. Like I was never in a chain of command where I didn't have some type of representation either as a female or as an African American. So, um, I feel like there were things when I was a junior sailor that I was shielded from that as a chief, I didn't have that luxury. Okay. So when I was going through chief season, one of my mentors, um, Wait, you know. is Chief Season uh, like Chiefs Academy? Is that like a school y'all go to? Um, it's not a school. It's just like a like basically like a it's like initiation. So it's like a six week program that we go through different classes, training, and basically the whole point is to give you a little bit of what you need to know, and then build that camaraderie between you and the other chiefs because okay. you have to trust them with your life, everything. There really can't be any secrets. You have to. 
if you're having a bad day, you have to be like, I'm having a bad day. If somebody cussed at you, you have to be like, this person cussed at me. Or if your husband did something, you got to be like, my husband did this. This is why I'm having a crappy day. Can you cover for me? Like type of situation. So uh, he's just like a brotherhood. Me, I mean, it is. It's, you know, we're brotherhood, sisterhood. You know, we refer to it as the most exclusive of fraternities because that's, you know, basically what it is. You know, you... Um, you don't, you know, you can't just happen, you know, happen your way. You can't wait it out. Like, um, you know, you have to have certain qualifications. You don't have members of uh, Greek life, like, listening right now. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, I'm, I'm so serious. So y'all the most we, exclusive uh, fraternity, yeah? We, yeah. Y'all the most exclusive sorority? Yeah, because we're tiny. Like, there's only so many of us that can say that we've done that, been there, and done that. There's only so many of us. You know what, senior? I'm not... <laughs> I'm not gonna dive too hard. It, don't dive, don't dive. I know what you're trying to say, but hmm. like <laughs> the non, a non exclusionary, like you totally, number one, you have to be in the Navy. Actually, we let some Air Force Coast Guardies go through chief season if, you know, they're proving themselves. But like less than, <laughs> less than 1% of our population is in the military. Think about that. Okay. Less than 1%. And there's even a smaller number of us that are in the Navy. An even smaller number of us that reach that rank of E7. Super, super, <sighs> super tiny. Super tiny. Look, super tiny. I, I like the way you're putting this. Super it's, tiny. It's very um, cute. Yeah. It's cute. It's super tiny. <laughs> so, like, you know, I know we have our Greek and, <laughs> you know, but we, those people were along are doing their thing, most of them, some of them, you know, a little bit longer than we've been doing our thing. That's number one. And then number two, like, you know, they, we didn't even have that rank when the Navy first started. So the <laughs> numbers are tiny. Like, they're really tiny. There's only so many of us that, that make it to that point. Um, and then <laughs> some of us quit. That's another story. Um, Wait, you can ch quit chief season? You, not chief season, but, you know, you can, you can, um, uh, Go become an officer. Oh, okay. Once you made chief and you made that rank, there's certain programs. You said quit like... We call them quitters. I'm you, sorry. Stop it, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a somebody, joke. Somebody ranked up and they quit. It's a joke. It's a joke. You know what? <laughs> they, you know, they chose the cushy life of the ward room versus the hard and rough life of the chief smith. Oh, what, um, what a decision. <laughs> that's, you know. We know it's about the money. We know it's about the money. You know, some, some of them, they're just following their parents' footsteps too, you know. How dare y'all want bigger um, paychecks? The nerve. Yeah, the nerve. <laughs> if you wanted to be rich, you should have gotten the job. No, I'm just playing. Wow. I'm just playing, but I'm so serious. <laughs> I'm so serious. <laughs> I'm so serious. But I get it. You know, I get it. I totally understand. You made it through. All right, so now you got a reason to brag. <laughs> I do have a reason to brag. Um, and I do it a lot. Um, I wear I wear my little mantle proudly because, you know, I like I said, I was just following my aunt's footsteps. And she was like, well, why don't you go officer? And in my mind, I'm like, I want to be a chief like you. Aww, that's what I want to do. Come on. So, so that's what I did. Come and now on. my daughter, we in the same conundrum. She's like, I want to be a chief. I was like, your Aww. daddy was a chief. Your mom was a senior chief. Your stepdad was a chief. You don't need to be. <laughs> I just need you to be. You just incentivized. incentivized I'm her. like, just go officer. You just motivated her to, no. I was like, just go officer. Just please, you know, I want to, you know, just continue to, you just know, to get to that point. Get to that point in the legacy. Like, you know what? What if she hears this and she's like, my mom said that this was the most exclusive fraternity sorority in the and world. And I told her that. Like, and and now she's telling me to go officer. She knows. Even though she just said it was the she cushy knows. life. She knows. <laughs> She knows the sacrifice because poor baby, like once I made chief, she didn't have a birthday no more because I was always <laughs> in a field somewhere making people do push ups. Wow. Um, yeah, so she was like, Man, y'all brother and y'all sisterhood, y'all need to figure it out. I was like, Whoa, calm down, shit mate. Um, no. <laughs> Calm down, okay. We ain't all created equal. Um, wow. Uh but yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty uh yeah. So yeah. Since you got your anchors and you know everything. <laughs> yeah. Nah, see, that's the misconception. It's not that I know everything, it's that I know who to talk to. Oh okay. that's what it's about. Okay. That's what it's about. I know who to go to. I can call them at any time of night. I can call them anywhere in the world and be like, hey. What's going on with this? Or, hey, I need help with this. Hey, my daughter's in San Tropez. Can you go pick her up? Like, that oh, type of. Yeah. Okay. 
That's yeah. family. That's that's fam. Oh okay. yeah, that's fam. So that's you family. know, that's yeah. why I say what I say. You know what I mean? I'm gonna hold true to that until some. You know, I'm I'm planning on going back to school and I'm gonna pledge something. They're gonna have to show me something because. I feel like you know, just just stay away from the grease, cause um, you know what? You know, after this conversation, just yeah, be an individual. I feel like you mm-hmm. know, hey, you know, but you know, I have to. I'm a civilian now, so I need to, you know, just spread my wings, fly out there. I'm gonna do that, but I'm not gonna say <laughs> I've been there, done that. I'm just gonna say, you know, <laughs> you know. I feel like if you were wearing a collar right now, it would be up. It would it would be yeah. I com- pop, I pop it, my yeah, collar very yeah. often. I very rarely have my collar down. Right on. Right. <laughs> All right, big bad chief. <laughs> That's how I feel. When <laughs> <laughs> when you brought complaints up to your chain of command, do you feel that you were heard? As a young sailor and even as a chief, I'm gonna say yes. Okay. I'm gonna say yes. Now, was that always the case? No. So it just depends on who you're talking to. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, my, you know, my field in which I came into is really tiny, like Mm -hmm. compared to other what we call rates. Um, Mm -hmm. Again, it goes back to that. It's only so many of us. (laughs) So we tend to be a little bit more tight knit and we just tend to take care of each other a little bit more. So, you know, I was in that community or worked closely with that community and not really outside of my community for a long time in in my career. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't until like later, later that I kind of started being parts of other communities. And so, yeah, I definitely felt hurt because somebody always had my back because these people are my family. Like a lot of them I still talk to to this day. Like literally the first person that was in charge of me lives right around the street from me. <laughs> like I saw her house on Facebook. I asked her where she lived. <laughs> And I was like, we're going to be neighbors. <laughs> so um, she was at my retirement. She helped me take care of my babies. Oh, that's what's like, up. Like, you know, she gave me that first underage drink. Lord. I wouldn't <laughs> recommend that for the new sailors. But I told this at my retirement. But she took care of me. Because right after I got stationed here, I was pregnant. And they sent my husband out to sea right after I had my child. And she made sure that I was taken care of. And then if there was person after person like that that were my leaders. Wait, is um, this a sister? As I was in the Navy. Yes. The lady you're talking about? Yes. She's a black lady. Yes, she's a black lady. Sunita, lead with that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's further down. It's further, we're going to get to that. It's further down in the story. But, um, but yes. So, yes, she took care of me. And, um, and I, I've always had that person, you know, um, as I, even as I got higher in rank, somebody that you could turn to, um, to ask questions, to bounce things off of, to help you through situations. So, um, that's one of the things that kept me in the military is that, that, you know, sisterhood, that familyhood that, that happens when, you know, again, like you, you're, it's less than 1% of us. So, you know, we can't help but to Nobody else knows what we're talking about. Everybody else thinks we're crazy and we're like, man, this sucks. And they're like, man, I wish I could have did what you did. But they don't understand the sacrifice. And they're like, hey, thank you for your service. But you don't understand what that really means if you weren't either in the military yourself or, you know, married to somebody that was in the military or a military child. Like, you don't understand the sacrifice that happens. And you never could because you really couldn't. I can't make, I can't put you in that place um, mm-hmm. And so our circle is small. It it's small, and mm-hmm. when your circle's small, like your family and you know people, you know, because generally people want you to be productive. Yes, a happy sailor is a productive sailor. Mm-hmm. So if I can help ease your pain or your problem, and that was another reason why I fought so hard to become a chief. If I can take some of the burden off of you, then I'm going to do that because I know how hard it is to do what it is that that you're doing right now. Because I've been there. So I want to help you. So that's leadership. Yeah. I love that. All right. So that would be yes. (laughs) Staying on task. Yes. (laughs) You, you were heard. I was hurt. That's what's up. Oh, um, this has nothing to do with too much, but that first drink that you had underage, are we talking like MB 2020, Boone's Farm? So. Or was it something classy? No, she was classy. (laughs) She, we always drink wine. And to this day I go to her house and we have wine that. You were an underage drinker and you went to wine. Are you t- well, it was after. So wine when I was at home, when I was back home, I was drinking the MD 2020. <laughs> right? 
So, you know, because that's all we could afford. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's all we could afford, you know. That's all I could afford on my little Arby's paycheck. Look, that is what children drink. You want some MD twenty twenty? I can remember, you know, my boyfriend used to drink Boone's Farm. Lord, and it wasn't that Boone's Farm wasn't for me, you know. But the MD twenty twenty, Lord, it was close enough to wine that I was just like, you know what? And I knew I was gonna be a Merlot drinker, right? Because I was drinking that grape MD twenty twenty. <laughs> Also Prepare. known in the African American <laughs> Methodist Church as uh, communion wine. Lord. That's what they were serving as communion wine. Lord, Lord. MD twenty twenty. God is my witness. <laughs> God is my witness. I saw the MD twenty twenty and I was like, so <laughs> conflicted. Like, how do I feel about this? Is, is this the Last Supper or is this uh, is, or is it turn up? It's a turn up. <laughs> turn up for Jesus. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to turn up for Jesus. I will do Amen. That. Amen. He knows your heart. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was definitely, uh, you know, by the time I, I had to be a little bit sophisticated, you know, because you're a little bit older than me, you know. Look, wine is an old lady. I don't want to say old, but yeah, it is. It's like, I, I drink that and I'm kind of an old lady, yeah. like, but I didn't start off with you wine. You didn't start off with wine. No. But, you know, hey, when you went in Rome. God feel you. All right. Went in Rome. That's. <laughs> In the beginning of your career, when you needed guidance and mentorship, were those resources provided or did you have to seek them out? They were provided. Amen. Um, it was it. pretty much a requirement to the point where they you know, they had a checklist on who didn't have paperwork and who did have paperwork. And, I, you know, of course, that program was more stringent from one command to the next, you know, just like anything, right. when you put a human in charge of something, you could get great results or you could get, okay, blase results, you know, right. And if nobody's checking on it, you know, you know, but for the most part, um, you know, the paperwork was one thing. It was kind of meant to make sure that you were doing what you're doing, but in the, you can't really get through the military without having a mentor. So you always, you're always going to attach yourself to a person that you look up to and you admire, you want to be mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that just happens naturally. Yeah which is probably why people didn't do paperwork because they were like, we already doing this. What are we doing? <laughs> but it just happens naturally. So you always seek that person out and someone's always making sure when you're asking questions, that's one of the main things that they ask. They're like, hey, do you have a mentor? Wow. And if you don't have one, if you say, no, I don't have one, they're quick with a number. Here, call this person. Here, email this person. Here, talk to this person. You know, I'm going to call them, but then you call them and follow up, you know. So um, I, I always saw that so yeah it was definitely provided it, I don't want to say push down your throat that's what first comes to <laughs> mind but it was it was definitely highly encouraged that you have a mentor so um I had long-term mentors I had short-term mentors um and it was something that I made sure that I always had because you know I ask a lot of questions but this is really nice to hear I yes. I do not get a yes to that uh, question. Oh, that's so Where, sad. Not very often. Like yeah. some people are able to say yes, but yeah. like to the extent that you just said yes. Yeah. This was nice. That's, this was nice a, to hear. A, yes, a no brainer is like you need to me. Yeah. Like, Sunita, have you been able to make friends with other black lady v veterans and are you purposeful about building your village? Most definitely. Amen. Um, and we tend to just gravitate to each other naturally. Mm -hmm. Because our experience is different. And when you're more senior, you know, when you see a junior sailor that, you know, is a black female, mm -hmm. you already know what they're going to go up against. Mm -hmm. So you try your best to give them the tools to help manage that. And so, you know, we always tend to gravitate to each other to the point where one of my sailors, <laughs> <laughs> he happened to be a black male. Um, majority of our chain of command or the people in charge were african-american females get it um, wait what hold yeah, up from our department head down so our department head was a captain you had a black lady captain I had a black lady captain get out of i mean don't get out of here this is your she house was but a like, i'm gonna get out of here i was the senior chief in charge so i was the department chief and then the chief was also a black female Yo. um and so we had a a junior black female and then we had like um you know another minority she was asian so people so people lovely. thought that you know as african-american females being led by african-american females that our junior sailor was getting preferential treatment um <laughs> they, 
They were like, there's favoritism. <laughs> What they didn't know is we tend to be harder on each other right. um, <laughs> to the point where I don't even want to see you. Like, please don't talk to me because I know you're going to say something crazy and it's going to make me angry. But still sharp and still. But that was kind of the situation. But yeah, we definitely. And he was like, yeah, you ain't going to get nothing in between those two or three people because, you know, the bond between black females is serious. And he was right. You know, we grew up with <laughs> sisters and a mom. So, you know, we, he, he knew what it was, but we, we, we tend to be harder on each other because, you know, it's all about the representation and you know how we are as African-Americans, period. Like, you, you're not just living for yourself. You're representing all of us. Nobody who came to this country was ever living for themselves. <laughs> you know, you're representing everybody. And the path that you open up is going to be the path that people behind you can follow. And so you have to be on point. You have to be, you know, that that syndrome that we have, you know, you have to be better than the best mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if not, then you're not going to be seen. You're not going to be heard. And, you know, so we. Is that that uh, twice as good to get half as much? Yeah. Is that that? And, and, and you're the one because we are who we are. You know, the nurturers, I had to remind somebody he was like, oh, well, you know, you can't do this with a kid. And I'm like, well, how many kids did you raise? <laughs> Let's start with that. He was on kid number one. And I was like, how many brothers and sisters did you have to raise? How many cousins? And oh, let's not get back on the generation of black women that took care of people that look like you every day. Come on. So it's Come in my on. DNA. Um, and so we're nurturers. We're just naturally nurturers. Right. And even though they try to put that angry black female label on us. And, you know, that's what they do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. definitely that's unique to us. Nobody gets that. Oh, she's an angry black female. You know, you only get that if you. A black female right um so and you know i had one of my mentors tell me that he was like this is how you're going to be perceived and i was like what shut your mouth but he was <laughs> right like he i was like oh my i can't believe this like wow you know what i mean like i'm the nicest person and praise is what i do you know i'll be singing to him you know i'll be walking through the hallway smiling everybody be like hey but as soon as i try to correct a wrong or something mm -hmm. that you did to me that was not right and I get a little, you know, boisterous about it. Now I'm an angry black female. Yeah. Because I'm not letting you treat my sailors any kind of way. Right. Now I'm an angry black female. Because I'm not going with the flow. You know what? I'm going to just be angry. Okay? Yeah. I'm, I'm not letting angry. this shit slide. And I'm going to be like, yeah, I am mad. So what you going to do to fix it? Um, <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, you, you kind of, you know, we do gravitate to each other. And of course, because that experience is so unique. You know, you, you have to be just purposeful about building those relationships. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, of course, you keep those relationships. Like I said, she, my LPO lives right around the street. <laughs> like, she lives right around the street. She still she was over my house just two days ago. Um, love it. Love it. we was drinking wine. <laughs> I mean, well, y'all are grown-ups now. Here we go. <laughs> um, so, and yes, and I keep in touch with, you know, my little junior black female. Like, she still calls me. I took her out for her birthday. Aw. Get it. Um, because that's what somebody did for me. So that's what, you know, hey, you're not alone in this. And if you need anything, you always have somebody to call. Because, heaven forbid, you get to the point where you think you're alone in something and there's nobody that can understand what you're going through. And then, you know, I've had a lot of sailors, you know, not make it because they've taken their own lives or they hurt themselves in some kind of way. So above all else like i try to avoid that especially when it comes to us because we put a lot on our shoulders Indeed. it's just what we are we yep. you know we we're we're superhuman you know what i mean and it seems that way but we're actually just regular human beings right right with just a lot of weight of experience on our shoulders the weight of the world it it just causes us to be different kind of people right and people gravitate towards that or they're you know repelled by it like, like right oh, she thinks she's all that it's because i am a word. I walk like a queen because that's what I am. Word. So if you can't handle it, that sucks for you. Because <laughs> like, everybody loves me. Like, that's that's kind of how I feel. Senior, you mentioned that you had a sea daughter. Yes. You, do you only have one or are there many? Um, There's there's only like a probably about three. I may say four people that I consider like my sea daughters. Only because I actually went out to sea with them. 
<laughs> I actually went out to see with them. Everybody else, they are just my junior seniors. So, I mean, we say see mama. We, I, I'm see mama to a lot of people. Okay. But I only consider about true, like, a handful of people, like, you know, my C children. So 50 people call you mom, but you only call 10 of them kids. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably more like 250 call me mom. Wow. But I, I don't only claim call all like maybe 10. And the 10 might be a little bit of high of a number. Only 10 of them I consider like my C children. Senior, you have an actual daughter who is actually in the military. Yes. How does your biological child feel about you calling all these other kids yours? So, I think, I'm pretty sure, no, I'm not going to say I think. She <laughs> understands, you know, when she was a teenager, she would call and be like, oh, I feel sorry for your sailors. I'm like, no, my sailors feel sorry for you. Wow. Because I can't say everything to them. Wow. But you get hot out the skillet. <laughs> no filter. I have to filter what I say to them. So, when I'm in the office giving you the what for, they be like, dang. <laughs> dang. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. And I, I don't think, as far as like the individual people, I don't think, well, now that she's in, like I said, she sympathized with them. I don't think she ever was jealous of my okay. sailors because, <laughs> you know, she, you know, she, so, her upbringing was different. Let's so out of way. your biological daughter that is now in the Navy and your sea children, who's your favorite? <laughs> Of course, I love my real younglin the most. <laughs> that, I mean, that's the only right answer. I just it's kind of hard not to love her. Like she's just like me, just in a brighter version and a lot less filtered. Um, so yeah, she's very amusing. She actually is Jesus. Very amusing. She is a barrel of money. And she calls me a lot. Don't tell her that. She calls me a lot. <laughs> Does she mom. call you senior or is it is it mom? No, it's mom. <laughs> it's mom. Mom. What about this? What about this? Mom. Guess what happened? And then a lot of times she'd be like, ooh, girl. I'd be like, who are you talking to? <laughs> That's wrong on so many levels. Please don't do that. But, you know, I just let her talk because it's funny. Y'all friends, basically. Yeah, she my homegirl. Y'all friends. We friends at this point. I love it. People I love be like it. red flag when you hang out with your children. I mean, no, like, she's what? grown. Yeah, she grown. She's grown. You know, and we got this shared experience. We right. Can't help but to hang out with who else she gonna hang out with? What if she messes around and makes it to the chief's mess? Then y'all got even more. Then we got even. Now nah, that's gonna be serious. <laughs> Don't make me start crying up in here. That's gonna be so serious. I. Uh, uh, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's gonna be serious. I'm. I'm kind of pushing her away from it. I'm like. Don't do it. Like I think I, at this point, we both know she's not going to listen. At this point, she, I'm sure she's going to do what she want to do. You know, I'm just trying to, you know, trying to get her focused on one thing sooner mm -hmm. than the, you know, than the other thing. And, you know, if it happens, it happens. But I want her to shoot past that. Like, that shouldn't be your goal. If that's a step in your plan, got it. But I don't want you to stop there. I want you to go on to where I feel like she would benefit the Navy the most. Okay. Yeah. Okay, look look at you. Yeah, I mean, she's guiding. A, she's a really good leader. Like, she she's got it. Like she's like, girl, you would be so awesome in the war room. Yes, <laughs> she had good leadership. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you did that. Yo, you did that, senior. I, I do what I can do when you I can you do did it. that, senior. Yeah. I've met her. You did that, senior. Senita. Yes. Tell me a war story, a story where you were tested but came out on top. So, I'm in another country. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was always the junior sailor that was hanging out with the more senior sailors. Mm -hmm. And so at the 11th hour, sign my chit so that I can be out with the first classes, mm -hmm. you know, because that's, that's what we did. And there was another E5 sitting in the middle. I feel like we were, I want to say we were in Spain. You were in E5 as well? I was in E5. Okay. Hanging out with a bunch of E6s. We're trying to get to our hotel room. Curfew's on its way. We look to the left. We see like some officers over there. We're like, okay, we need to hurry up and go. And then we see her sitting in the middle of Spain by herself. Okay. By herself. Drunk. No oh, shoes okay. on. I think Ooh. she had her purse. She had her shoes off. She was talking crazy. 
And we were like, okay, we got, we, you know, like, what's your hotel? Where are you staying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's talking and we're just like trying to talk to her, not draw attention. And then she like comes over and she like makes a pass at me. And I was like, Wait, oh. you mean she tried to hit on you? Yes. Or, or hit you? Like She was trying to hit on me. And I was like, girl. <laughs> with no shoes on? With no shoes on. She got confidence. <laughs> Lord. And everybody around me saw me and they were like, oh, oh God. Like, Please don't hit this girl. I just want to make sure she's safe. So, you know, we, you know, I, I kind of, because she was kind of gravitating towards me the most, you know. I kind of, you know, put my arm under her arm and was like, come on, girl, let's go. You know, the homegirl talking dude, because she happened to be another African-American female. Oh, man. And, you know, we're talking. I'm like, come on, girl, we got to get you to your place where you got to go, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, we made it there safely. Good. We got her to her room without getting in trouble. Good. We got to our rooms without getting in trouble. I feel like that's a win. Yes. Because I've never been on liberty risk, praise the Lord. <laughs> I, you know, was always able to come and go as I pleased. And so I feel like that was a test and it worked out and, you know, it helped guide me later on in life when, you know, I was dealing with more senior people that were kind of in the same situation. <laughs> I knew exactly what to do, but yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like that was kind of a test Yeah, that, you know, I don't have any like somebody shot at me stories or anything like that because <laughs> on an aircraft carrier, there's a lot of defense. Like if somebody was trying it, they would have, you know. Right. They would have got dealt with <laughs> swiftly. So I didn't have those kind of stories. I was never ever in like any like real danger really. Good. Um Good. because like I said, we always we always rode in a squad. So yeah, never had any craziness like that, you know. Right on. A few senior people trying to get at me. That was crazy. That is crazy. But, uh, you know, I avoided that like a champ because, you know, my mama didn't raise no food. And I wasn't really great with my money, but I knew how to keep it. <laughs> I, I knew that. how to keep it. I, I was that. not trying to get in trouble. Trouble, <laughs> jail, those things are not for me. Ooh, so yeah. I'm pretty, you know, I did some stuff, but I'm very square. I'm going to, and I admit to that. Y'all, she did the, the, very the, the square. She did the finger thing where she did I'm the square, square in the air. <laughs> she, she made a air square. You know, I place. got speeding tickets. That's it. <laughs> Nothing. I don't got no record. I wasn't in no gang. I ain't repping no set. I ain't do no drugs. Um, like, you're repping Chiefs. Uh, the, I'm repping Chiefs. I'm talking about like gang. You know, I'm talking about like. The way you described it, it felt gang related. It, <laughs> some people do feel like we're in gang. Sometimes we do squat up. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to lie on no great floaty things. You know. <laughs> You see the chiefs coming, you might want to get out of the way. Cause Lord. We're all just humans. And there are some thugs. <laughs> thugs with anchors. Ooh, there are some thugs. Because you can take us out of it, but you can't take it out of us. You know, I feel like you stay with what you came in with. You know, I was raised in the church. I'm all about Jesus, the Holy Ghost, you know. Uh, I say I'm somewhere between praises what I do and nothing if you buck. Like, I'm, I'm happy and I'm going to praise the Lord. But if you try me a lot of times, because I got a lot of cheeks. I turn a lot of cheeks. I give people the benefit of the doubt. But if you try me too much, that Southside Columbus comes out real quick. Real quick, I have family members that went to jail and they ain't scared to go back. Lord. And so I Lord. know what that sounds like. I know what it feels like. I saw my mom get into a fist fight with a lady. Wow. So wow. I, I come from a line of scrappers. So it's wow. in there. It just takes a lot more to get it out of me. You know, and then being in the Navy, that kind of quelled it a lot as well. Okay. But don't try it. Y'all, don't, don't try Senior Chief Please right don't. now. Please don't. Not now, especially because she's she's got these nails and they're, uh, yes. they're very pretty. Yes, because I'm no longer I'm no longer you know in... you're no longer thugging. I'm, no, no, I'm still thugging. <laughs> Come on, but I'm not having to thug as much because a lot less people try you in the civilian world. Right know? on. A lot less people try you in the civilian world. That's the one thing I can say. They, yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Oh my God. Oh well, senior. Do you feel that the way that you were treated improved with rank? That's crazy. That's a good question. I feel like it actually got worse. Wait, what? Yeah, because you know how they say God protects the young and fools, right? So when you're a junior sailor, you don't know a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Not saying that a lot of people try to make the Navy 
something that is not because it really is a good environment right especially if you're surrounded by the right people like um it could be very rewarding but there's just like any organization like there's dark sides to our organization. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. You don't have to deal with that as a junior sailor as much as you do when you get senior. So being an African-American female, like I said, you always have to be on point, prove yourself, this is that and the third. Mm -hmm. But people, the higher in rank you are, the less people care about your feelings. Okay. And so because of that, the disrespect wow. gets, it can get intense. It can get intense and it's definitely a lot more because when you're a junior sailor, like you have chiefs and officers and even senior um, sailors that are trying to protect you from that. Okay. And they're the ones that's getting the brunt of that disrespect. Mm -hmm. So the disrespect is coming down to them and a chief or a first class or a divo or a junior officer that's worth their weight in gold is not going to pass that on to you. Okay. And so I was blessed enough to have some amazing leaders that, you know, whatever they were getting in the office with the senior people, they didn't bring it down to us. You know what I mean? Right on. Um, and so, of course, that's what I led with as well. That's one of the reasons why I fought so hard to become a chief because I'm like, this doesn't make sense. Like, why are you making us do X, Y, and Z Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know that HOV ain't open until this time or it closes at this time and it's HOV 2 only, but you got us here doing what that we could totally do tomorrow right. or we could totally do the next day. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out why we still here. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out why you waited till 3.30 <laughs> or 15.30 to y'all military types. Why you waited <laughs> at 15.30 to tell me that I needed to find a hard drive. <laughs> that's been missing since 1965. Get out of here. <laughs> you tell me, these are the type of things I had to deal with as a junior sailor. Like, you telling me you did inventory two years ago and it was there. You doing inventory two years later and it's missing. And you expect me to find it? At 1530. Yes. At 1530? Roger that. Like, so I was like, you know what? It's got to be a better way. Let me, let me do what I need to do to become chief. What I need to do? Oh, I need to go. Okay. And I need to go to this command. I need to go to a ship. Oh, okay. Got it. I'm going to do that because you know what? It's got to be a better way. And so, yeah. So it just, people are a lot more, less, less candid. They're a lot less candid or a lot less reserved the higher rank you get. And people, you know, tell you how they feel, which in some instances, that's what you want, right? Like, mm -hmm. so if you're talking about a group of officers in a war room, I should be able to say what I need to say without, you know, if it's a group of chiefs in a chief's mess, we need to say what we need to say, get it out and get it done. But when that crosses over or when it gets to the point where it's disrespectful mm -hmm. or you're saying it just because you don't like me or like the methods right. or like the way that I'm leading my sailors, right. that's when it's crossing a line. Now right. it's a problem because you have, there's a certain anonymity you have to give to the way that you treat me like you can't just treat me any kind of way because you don't like me and people do that higher up a rank and you know even my daughter is going against that right now so and I try to mm -hmm. talk her through that but you know you know how it is the kid that got picked on in school now you got some little rank now yep. you become a bully mm -hmm. you know bullying leads to bullying like yeah, we hurt people hurt people yeah so that's that happens it happens in the real world and it happens in the Navy. Yeah. Yeah. So. So the people that were most candid with you when you gained rank, they were people your rank and higher, right? Um, There's no way lower ranking people were. Oh, yeah. Lower ranking people were disrespectful, too. Yeah. Because they'll blame, you know, they, you, they, huh. they blame you for stuff. They're like, they're <laughs> like, hey, you know. Why do we have to do that? You know, especially right. the generation's years. You know, nothing against them. <laughs> and the millennials, technically, I'm a millennial too. I'm like at the higher end. Like, I'm the first. And then, like, you know, all my kids are millennials. You know, you know, my naturally birthed kids. They're all millennials too. Like, um, actually, I think they're all millennials. All of my children combined are millennials except for one. Um, the one I met is not a millennial. Yes. Oh, she's definitely a millennial. She is not. She's a millennial. She was born in 1995 or before? She, she was So, not. no, 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 no. So that's wrong. That's wrong. It actually starts before 95 and it ends right when she was born in 2001. She was born in 2001. So millennial, millennial goes past the 90s. 
millennial goes from 1981 uh-uh. to 1995. That's a 14 year span. That's all generations have a 14 year span. Well, the research that I looked into, <laughs> that I got training on, it goes past. Wait, that. this is military training you're talking about? Yes. And that's why I'm well, no. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. It was military, but it was it was civilian leadership training. They were teaching it to the military, but they were all civilians. So they gave us a range, and I was like, dang, me and my kids. Because one was born in 98, one was born in 2001. We're She's all considered Gen Z. millennials. She acts like a millennial. She doesn't act like a Gen Zer. It's kind of like that cancer thing we were talking about, the cusp. Look into it. Look into it. Look into it. I'm telling you. She definitely a millennial. She's not a Gen Zer. I've led and birthed those people. No, she's definitely a millennial. <laughs> She's definitely a millennial. Um, but yeah, so she's on the end. She's the last, the tail end, and I am the beginning. So there's like, what? I, I had her when I was 20. And I had my oldest daughter when I was 17. So. You were 20 in t- the year 2000? I was, yes. Well, I was 20 in the year 2001. Okay, so you're 1981. I'm 1981. Okay, you're definitely yeah. a millennial. Yeah, because she was born in September. I know. Yeah. She's a Virgo. Yeah. She's a winner. Oh, okay. All right, Virgo season. Bam. All right. Just I like that. Ya. Bam. Then that, this makes sense. No. <laughs> yeah, she definitely is a... A Virgo? Yeah. Yeah, she's a wonderful she, person. Yeah. We normally are. <laughs> I don't like this look. She is good. Senior. <laughs> Y'all a little bit different. It's okay, though. You know it's what? different in a good way. You raised one. I did. So I, I think I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> wow. She's a little bit different. But in a wow. good way. In a good way. But she the turned up one. Like, I'm like, dang. I'm like, girl. Has there ever been a tough situation that you were in where another sister helped you out? Or a situation where you were able to help, it, help out another sister? Oh, yes, most definitely. Oh, right. So, um, I, like my whole career, any issues, most of the issues that I had, I was talking to somebody that looked like me to get guidance and advice. Because, I love that you have that as an option. Yeah, and, and I did. And I was lucky. That is at, luck. You know, at my level. What I didn't have is like representation until later on in my career of like, you know, like in the officer ranks. Like there were mm-hmm. plenty of us that were like chiefs and mm-hmm. senior chiefs and but I didn't see a lot of African American officers until you know I kind of got higher in rank and then I became a chief and I knew a lot of chiefs that crossed over. And then when I went to um, like a certain command, I was like, oh man, look at all these beautiful <laughs> black women that are officers, commanders. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. <laughs> Captains. Okay, go ahead. Represent. Go Love off then. So, yeah, but no, I always had somebody that was, you know, right around the same rank as me that I could turn to and be like, hey, this is what happened. Like, help us with that. Literally, help us with that. <laughs> um, So, yeah, most definitely. I definitely had um, that as an option. And sisters helped you out and you helped out and sisters. And I helped out sisters. I love so, it. And That's Because community. a lot That's of times the, the, the thing that would, it was always like a personality conflict usually that caused the issue that I was going through or somebody that didn't look like me who couldn't understand why I did the certain things that I did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I always had to get an ally with somebody who could, you know, help break it down Barney style to these people <laughs> that, hey, we ain't all the same just because we in the military and we the same rank or just because we in the military and we the same division. We ain't the same. Like, my life doesn't look like yours, white man right. with a wife at home to right. help take care of your one kid. Wow. I have two kids <laughs> by myself. Like, I don't have family that lives with me. I don't mm-hmm. have family here. I'm a single parent. So, guess what? If my child doesn't get on the bus till this time, I won't be at work until after that. Right. Because, guess what? Ain't nobody got gas money to be driving up and down, you know, whatever road I lived on in Augusta, Georgia. Like, <laughs> I need you to understand. I don't need you to get, you know, don't, you don't have to give me special treatment. I just need you to be understanding of my situation. Right. That's it. Because I'm not the first one that you're going to deal with like this, and I'm not going to be the last. So right. that's kind of what I brought to the table that other people, you know, I, my life experiences was way different from everybody else's because everybody act like they had it all together. Like, <laughs> you know, my <laughs> wife and my this and the, Okay, well, we all don't have that life. Right. 
We all don't have, you know, retired veteran husbands and wives sitting at home that's got all this extra money. So guess what? <laughs> Sometimes sailors do have to go to medical to get robot testing. Because guess what? If they're the only breadwinner in their family and they're at E5 right. and it's a family of six. What? Oh, ooh, yeah. If it's a family of six. Wow. Sh- guess what? Sailor got to go get robot testing. Yeah, it's free. It's free. Well, and how you deny somebody their medical rights? Right. Like, right. Right. So, well, why would somebody have to do that? Uh, girl, because everybody don't make the money that you make. Thank you. With no kids. And you, it's just you and your husband. And you live in a huge house in Williamsburg. Girl, stop. <laughs> Sympathize. Sympathize. You it's got, not that hard. You, it's not you that got hard. to. Enlisted people don't earn a lot anyways. Yes. Especially junior rank. Like, we don't have a whole lot of money. I think right. my husband was a retired senior chief and she was an E6. <laughs> they had no kids. Yeah. They had two dogs. Congrats to them. Yeah, congrats <laughs> to them, but I need you to take care of my sailors. Right. Let that right. girl go to medical. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Get off that sofa. Senior, tell me something you wish you had known before joining the service. Again, I wish I knew how to take care of my money. I could be a millionaire right now. I Look here. By myself. I ain't talking about with my husband's income. <laughs> talking about by myself. I could literally be a millionaire right now. So oh, you never contributed to TSV? I did, but it wasn't <laughs> until later in the game, you know, because you know, we don't we don't get that education. Right. We don't get those people to take us to the side and be like, Hey, do X, Y, and Z and you know, when you don't come into the military with that mentality, like First of all, it's your parents' job to teach you that. If your parent was working two jobs and living paycheck to paycheck mm-hmm. and a single parent and they didn't really save money or you didn't, they didn't talk to you about that, then you, don't, you just you don't know what you don't know. Right. And then, you know, we're so mistrusting of, I mean, I know I was in the government, but I don't trust y'all talking about you going to take my money because when I came in, TSP was new. <laughs> so when things are new, you like, uh, right. uh, uh. So I waited a little bit late in the game to start contributing to my TSP. Had I okay. done it now, I have the benefit of knowing. And I told my child, please, please, max <laughs> out. If you don't do anything else, max out your TSP. <laughs> max out your TSP. And you getting contribution, max it out. Do that now. She might be listening to you on that one. Buy a house. Do that now. She definitely listened to you on like, that one. Don't wait to do that. Consolidate your debt right now. Do it now while you don't have any real responsibility. <laughs> you know, work on that. So she has the benefit of that, you know, for me and her stepfather. And I just didn't have that. Um, even as a junior sailor, like married to my banker husband, he still, <laughs> you know, we was kids. So he did what he wanted to do. And so, you know, but yeah, that's really the only thing. Tell me about a time you learned a lesson you weren't ready to learn. So, I wasn't ready to deal with someone who had an abusive, I remember I had a sailor that had like an abusive spouse. It wasn't something that I ever had to deal with before, like as a leader, right? One of my, one of, you know, one of my brothers in arms, you know, he would come, come and talk about how his wife would hit him with books, but it was kind of like, it was different, right? Because we're both, you know, same rank, we're talking, you know leaning on each other, giving problems in it. And, you know, that didn't check them. You know, there was no red flag that went up like, oh, my God, let me go and tell someone, right? Because this is a whole grown man. So right. if he wanted to do something about it, he would do something about it. But I had a, and he wasn't technically my junior sailor. He was the sailors of one of the other chiefs in my division. But it fell on me because I was someone at work when the situation first happened. So sailor's wife calls, demanding that he comes outside um, because of whatever gripe she had with him. And um, she, you know, they were talking, they were fussing, it was heated. And she took her keys and threw them in her face. And I was like, hello, domestic violence and assault. And, you know, then we bring him in and I'm talking to him, come to find out, you know, it gets more extensive than that. So that wasn't really a lesson. One that I was equipped to really handle at the time, it was like, you know, I had just made chief that I was equipped to handle at the time. And it was really a lesson that I didn't even have to learn. Like I, like I would tell my sailors all the time after that and a couple of incidents that I witnessed, I would just be like, we always talk about the drinking and the driving, etc. But keep your hands to yourself. Don't hit your spouse. Don't allow your spouse to hit you. 
because if we find out about it now we have to get involved and now you have people in your business when mm -hmm. the navy in the military period offers so many tools to help prevent those things from happening right when you know you always hear about it of course you hear about it but then when you see it firsthand you're just kind of like well dad you know yeah or you know when you're dealing with sexual assault or some somebody that has sexually assaulted a minor or is being accused of that mm -mm. what like what do you do like it's so especially if you have kids yourself like it's just something you don't you don't ever want to have to be faced with and you don't ever have to deal with. And I don't think anybody, I don't care how much training you go through, I don't think anybody's really equipped to handle those types of situations, especially if it's something that happens in your face. Like, Right. Yeah. Right. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And it takes a toll on you. Do you feel that you are a better leader than the ones you grew up under? It's like I said, most of my leaders were pretty awesome. Now, are there a couple that I can pick out and be like, yeah, I did better than that person. <laughs> but for the most part, like I said, you know, I was just blessed. And, you know, I feel like God put me in the right situations at the right time with the appropriate people around me. There's probably like a handful of people that I can be like, you know, because every leader teaches you something. So there's probably a handful of leaders that I'm like, you know, I definitely did better than you when it came to this. Right. Or, few things or the way I handled this situation. But for the most part, I was blessed to have, and as far, especially my immediate supervisors, like um, I was supposed to have good people over me. I love it. I can't believe you got a black captain at one point. I did. Look, I'm, Sunita, I am so jealous right now. <laughs> I did. And then I was under a commander. She ended up picking, picking, picking up captain. So yeah, I, oh, I, on, I was, I was surrounded by some bad ones now. They man. were, man, they were pretty the legitimate. The jealousy I have right they now. They were pretty legitimate. Are there any sisters in service that inspire you? Either past or present? They could be retired, active. Um. So, the one of the ones that comes to mind is, and I'm going to have to look up the other lady, but one of the ones that comes to mind is, she's a captain right now in the IP community. Her name is Jamie Hill. Get it. And I can remember... So I wasn't working directly under her at first. Um, then we did a reorg. So I was on staff. I met her on a staff, CSG five. <laughs> CSG five. The dance she just did to so get I to that to, number. I had to think about it. I had to think about <laughs> which deployment was it. So actually, so it was her. And then the senior enlisted leader was also a black female Come on. Um, master chief. Come um, on. Still keep in contact with her. So they both, she she was the senior enlisted, super, senior enlisted leader, but she was also the department chief. And then Miss Hill was the department head. They were just the, like the awesome dynamic duo. Man, and so um, they kept me sane during that deployment because it was kind of <laughs> a crazy, you know, a lot of crazy situations happen. I don't think she realizes how much she kind of left an impression on me. Just seeing her poise and her grace. And, she, you know, it. she didn't play, but she wasn't <laughs> saucy about it. She just, she knew what she knew. She was super smart, like just super, <laughs> super immaculately intelligent. And no one could put anything over on her. So she ended up having to kind of, that we were kind of going through like a transition period where people who did her job, who were typically in charge of like the IT side of things, um, she got, uh, put in a position where she was kind of in charge of all those different elements that fell under um, the IWC, the Information Warfare Commander on staff. She kind of got put in the power position that's right under the IWC. Mm -hmm. So the Deputy IWC, I think is what D stands for in DIWIC. And she not being of like, so she was like information professional flavor. And most of the people that ran that kind of like that, that subsect or those positions under the IWC, mm -hmm. they were typically electronic warfare or heavy information warfare, meaning they worked in the departments that dealt with like, you know, who we shoot and who we don't <laughs> shoot and rules of engagement for a whole battle group. Like that's the type of stuff that they were in charge of. In that position so she 
was put in that position because, you know, the guy who was doing a horrible job at it, by the way, um, <laughs> he, like, went to some class or something. And when I say she ran that, like, get it, she ran it. It was so inspiring. And I started calling her Madam Dalek, like, <laughs> because she was just so awesome. And I was like, man, like, I wish... I had that poise and that professionalism, yeah. like, because I'm a thug. I'm not, you know what I mean? And I don't know how to keep it under wraps, but she knows how to keep it under wraps. So that's what really impressed me. And so to this day, like, I, I think of her often because she was just, you know, she was the shit. Like, I love she that. was the shit. So, you know, um, I had a CMC. Okay. Who, a master chief. She was a master chief. Get black it. female. Come on. Um, she was, and she transferred to the command that I was at in Maryland. Uh, you know, uh, Intel Command. Basically, we were information warfare, so that's what we did. And I don't know what her base job was, but it definitely was an information warfare. <laughs> okay, because she was a normal person. Most of us ain't normal. Most of us ain't normal. We're a little bit different, but just. Her class and her style, her name was Alicia Barnes. And I don't know if she knows the impression that she left on me. And even when, like, it came time for me to, like, get all my chief stuff together, you know, I was like, I need to call her. I need to make sure she knows, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, and so she was the CMC. She came off a CMC tour. You know, once you become a CMC, that's what you are. Mm -hmm. She came off a CMC, and she was the CMC of the Bulkley. Okay. So, black female, <laughs> CMC of a ship. Like, I just, you know, that I was so impressed by her. She was yeah. the one that sent my ex-husband out to sea, by the way, for 10 days. And she was like, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy that y'all ain't going out to sea and y'all in the Navy. And she made that happen. So, she was that type of person. One of the, one of the, you know, so, you know, she in charge of a, a warship, basically. So, you got the... CEO XO and the CMC. This is badass. She was really badass. Like she was really badass. And then um, April Bell, though, she's another Master Chief CMC of an aircraft carrier. Come on. Like I, I have so many examples. You know, especially at my rank, and they just, you know, when you see the, you're just in awe. You're like, oh my god. Like, I'm in awe just listening to you talk about this. You're just in awe because you know they're just in their poise and they're beautiful and it's black excellence at its highest, and you just. That just make you feel some type of way. You just yeah. be like, that's the stock that I come from. Yeah. You know, like Kendrick said, in my DNA, that's in my DNA. That's the stock that I come from. I mean, <laughs> hair tight, nails tight, everything Thank tight, you. uniform, <laughs> just straight. Like, and I, I you it. know, I'm a professional and I don't play. Oh, and then one more. I'm sorry. No, I'm, don't I'm, apologize. I'm, you, um, you tell. Yeah. So just recently, let me look her name up. <laughs> She's a captain as well. Get it. Um, I and cannot my, believe you know three black captains. Hold on, but the not Black only, lady captains. Wait, not only is she the captain, right, but she is the current CO of Naval Station Norfolk. Get the hell. Captain Janet Days? So, Yo, I first on. met her as the XO of Naval Station Norfolk because one of my collateral duties, I had to, like, she would sit boards that I was under, and I met her. I met her once. I only met her one time, but Yo. most of the time people would be like, you know, so sterile about it. Oh, let's do this. Da, 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 da. And she was <laughs> like, she looked over at me and she was like, okay, well, let's make sure that sailors have everything, you know, because there's two sailors, right. make sure that they have everything that they need. So we're going to give them this recommendation. But she looked at me, you know, like, <laughs> make sure you take care of our babies. Right. You know, yeah. as the XO. And when she made <laughs> CO and it was in the news, I was like, I know her. I I know that's right. Like, I, I mean, look at her. Yo, like, she looks bad. Naval Station Norfolk. But she also looks like a lady. Yeah. Largest naval base in the world. Oh, She's on. in charge. J so, Captain Janet Day. Yes. So this is the Navy that my baby is growing up in. And I'm so it. proud of that. So when people are like, oh, I ain't going to let my child go into the Navy. Why not? Like, <laughs> why not? Like, it looks I, like it's currently it's, in good hands. It's, it's in good hands. Like, we have... <laughs> Some representation, the first African American female at four star admiral. Like she's a African, she's a black lady. She's a black lady like us. So if she can do it, if she can Wait, do four it, four stars, four stars, four in the star. navy, in the navy, a black lady. I'm gonna look her up now too, because I can't even call her name. I just see her face. 
look now, I only know of like three uh, black ladies with stars alive today. But also, I don't know all the black ladies with stars, so yeah. uh, let me uh, stop embarrassing a lot myself of my, real quick. A lot of my, um, you know, because of the commands, I, I was attached to a lot of staff commands. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why you know all... <laughs> that's, you know, when you work for an admiral, Get it. you hear about the admirals, Get you know. It. When you work direct, let me say, we all work for admirals. When you work directly <laughs> for the admiral, <laughs> you hear about the admirals. <laughs> she's, um, she's pretty, pretty legit. Pretty love legit it. person. Like you just showed me an actual black lady. <laughs> I love it. And like she's a sister, sister. Like she ain't, you know, you know how people are, is she black? Yes. <laughs> she's black. Senior. Now that you have hooked me up with all this information, uh, and I, you know what? I I've heard of this lady, Michelle Howard. She's got four stars. Yes. Last served as the commander of the United States Naval Forces. Yes, ma'am. Holy cow. Yes, ma'am. First, Yo. First combatant commander, too. Yo. Yes. Okay. Pretty awesome. So this is the military that my daughter is in, and I'm And proud. good for her. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. Let's say you were just starting your life out on your own, and you were presented with the chance to join the service for the first time. Knowing what you know now, would you still join? Yes. I felt like that would be the answer. Yes. You've told me nothing but good stuff. Yeah, I'm definitely a, um, I mean, the military, is, I, I just feel like it's in my DNA and it is, and it's really, it's really not even just the military aspect, it's just service, like, mm-hmm. um, so just, you know, besides my dad being, you know, military nurse, my mom was a nurse, my grandmother was definitely like, the the like the neighborhood grandma like service was just in her soul like you know we were always in church she always participated in church she was an eastern star she did this she did that i mean it was all service and so you know coupled that with my auntie and my cousins and my uncles that were also in the military i just that's in my blood and so if I hadn't joined the military, I probably would have ended up being a nurse, like another like <laughs> service, central worker, first responder type job. Like I, that's probably what I would have done um, because I just feel like it's is part of my makeup. So yeah, that's an easy one. I definitely would have, you know, and my life, you know, when I look back at my life, it was just working up to that the whole time. Like I was just intrigued and mesmerized and, you know, my dad didn't raise me, but I was always interested in what he did. And my aunt, who's my favorite aunt, like <laughs> I named my firstborn after her. So I was always intrigued by what she did. And when she, when I finally got to the age where she could kind of break it down to me, like the benefits, yes. I was, it was a wrap, like, to, okay, this is what I'm doing. And so that's what I did. Solid. You know, I don't even want to ask you this next question because I legitimately know the answer. <laughs> But I do ask everyone, so this is only fair. Feel free to <laughs> cut me off because, oh, Lord. <laughs> if you had a daughter or any young impressionable black girl in your life that you cared about and she was considering a life in the military, would you try to talk her out of joining? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I, le- I legitimately knew the answer. <laughs> because even if you don't do 20, like we're not all lifers. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Right. 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 It is an amazing stepping stone and it's an amazing introduction into responsibility, adulthood, accountability, meeting people and seeing the world like there's no better way to do that unless, you know, you have some multimillion dollar, you know, parents, millionaires (laughs) that can send you around to all these different, you know, student ambassador and all this kind of different stuff that you know people with means can do for their kids Mm -hmm. um you're not going to get that experience and the life lessons and the tools you're not going to get those tools really by any other means like even Mm -hmm. in college and i did college for a couple two three semesters uh, like Mm -hmm. as a full-time student you you're not going to get that experience you're just it just you just don't get it you know because even in that type of environment is still very um the word i want to use is exclusive but it's that's not the word that i'm looking for <laughs> it's still very all right let me break out the thesaurus um, i'm trying to think of a good word to describe it 
Like, <laughs> you're still kind of in a, um, like, protected environment. Not saying that the military isn't a protected environment, but there's a lot of things that you're not going to experience in college because you're just going to school. You're, mm -hmm. you know, you're around some people that are a little bit older than you, but, you know, you ain't around a crotchety, like, 57-year-old <laughs> captain who, you know, came into the military to, when you was one, you know, and he just don't give a crap, you know, and he going to tell you like it is, and he going to laugh about it, and then he going to buy you drinks when y'all hit port, like... <laughs> You don't get that in college. Come on now. Come on. Like, the type of experience that that man that gave me, you know what I mean? The things that he saw in his life. Like, the people in college, they're only a few years older than you. What do they know about life? A lot of them, they still trying to figure it out. They think they know because they juniors or, you know, they in graduate studies. But you don't know about real life. <laughs> you get real life up front, close, and personal in the military. And you get it from all walks of life. There's people that I met who hadn't seen a black person until they came into the military. Wow. Right. So they grew up in a town somewhere in the Midwest mm -hmm. where black people just weren't in their town. And it was a small town, so they didn't go anywhere else. So, well, like a lot of us country people do. I'm a little bit country now, a lot of country. I grew up in a, in a nice size city. But <laughs> we don't all grow up that way. You know right. what I mean? So where, where, else, where else are you going to get that? So... Because of that stepping stone and those experiences that you get, those tools that you get, those life lessons, and then, oh, by the way, you know, salary. How many teenagers can say that they're on a salary job? I'll wait. Right. So when, when you have that, like, that's it. Like, so, yes, please experience it. Even if you just do four years, get you some money for school and you get out. Like, it's, it's a worthwhile experience, I believe. Even with all the drama, trials, tribulations, <laughs> um, definitely shaped who I am as a person. And when I, you know, when you go home, people are like, oh, I'm just going to do this. I'd be like, oh, man, that's so basic. Like, <laughs> what you mean you never been to Italy? What? Wow. Way to what flex. You, way, wait, to, way to flex. What do, you, what do you mean? Like, you think that Red Lobster is good. Wait, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> wait. I'm gonna need you to go to Portugal and get that same lobster. I'm gonna need you to. Okay, but does Portugal have have Cheddar Bay biscuits? I I bet they do. <laughs> I bet they do. I bet they. I bet you it's a restaurant in Portugal that sells Cheddar Bay biscuits. Could they be not as good as Red Lobsters? Yes, but guess what? I bet you it's fresher. I bet you the ingredients don't have MSG or whatever all the stuff that we be putting in our food in America. I'm telling you, it changes your life. <laughs> These are life altering situations. <laughs> life altering situation. Okay. But yeah, so. I don't know. Maybe maybe I want to stay home and enjoy Shrimp Fest, all right? You know what? Uh, <laughs> all power to you. Just don't invite me because I'm, I'm not coming. Don't invite me. Because I'm not coming. I had one of my friends get big mad at me when. <laughs> When I when I was like, she was like, oh, we're going here for, you know, such and such's birthday. It was Olive Garden. I was like, ew. Wow. I didn't say it to her. I didn't say it to her, oh, but God. her snitching brother told on me. Wow. And he knows because he was in the military too. You know. You got he was bougie. stationed. Wow. I was like, ew. I, listen. You said listen. an audible ew. When you go to <laughs> Naples, Italy, and you and somebody's they live upstairs and they cook food downstairs. They got a restaurant downstairs in their house. And you eat the, the love that's in that pasta. Like you can't go back to Olive Garden and, and think that it's real. Like, because it's not. It's not. It's real to somebody, Sunita. I Jeez. know, but not <laughs> if you've been to Italy. And I only spent five days in Naples. I didn't spend like a whole. Some people were stationed there. It only took me five days to know, you know what? So, so you know These what? They may people. have fresh pasta. All right, they may These have real people. pasta, but do they have unlimited breadsticks? Okay. Yes, they do. Oh shit! I'm already my bad. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> and and one of the sons asked to marry me, so I was about to come up out of there with a ring, breadsticks, extra salad, extra <laughs> salad. Girl, he was about to put me in the family, girl. I was like, I can't. We leave tomorrow. <laughs> we leave tomorrow. I'm sorry. But I'm so flattered. I'm so flattered. <laughs> You'd be lucky if the waiter at Olive Garden is nice to you. Like, <laughs> Americans are so mean. Why are you so mean? 
Why you Because so, they earn a minimum wage, Senator. They are actually they earn less than minimum wage. See? It's a whole other story. But right. you know, in Italy and in Europe, mm-hmm. those servers get paid right. good money. A living wage. They get paid good money. Good for so them. we need to fix that. And that's another reason. You're right. It's another reason why. Because the love. Like I said, <laughs> the love was in the pasta. Like, but I could taste it. Like his mama made it. And he served it to me. It was so good. And then he tried to put me in a family. And I was like, I got to go. The pasta wasn't good enough to be in the family? No, the pasta was good enough. I mean, it was. But, I, you know, I was under contract. I had to leave. Got, got I couldn't stay. They would cut my paycheck off. <laughs> but had it been in any other situation, I might stay. <laughs> they would have had to come find me in Italy. They would have had to come find me. I would have got lost. What a lovely experience. Yes. <laughs> Cause I was, whew, I was thinking about it. You thinking about that pasta now? Like, I like, am, cause it was so good. Lord, it was so good. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> I'm a foodie. I'm a foodie, by the way. I, I, I just learned. I'm ran by my stomach, and you know, I, so I it's all learned. about the food and drinks. <laughs> Your country ain't hitting if the food ain't good. I can't. Understood. I can't. Recruitment and retention is down across all the branches and with all demographics. Black women are not excluded from that. This was true even before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Why do you think black women are so disinterested in joining the military? Because we're woke. Um, I don't know if you mean that in a good way or bad way. I mean it in a good way. Oh, okay. (laughs) We are leading the United States and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Um, Most of the majority of small business are started by African-American women. Mm -hmm. We, not that we haven't always done that because we have, if you really go back and look at it, we were inventors. We were engineers. We started business. Yeah. You know, it's what we did. And when people came to us for our goods, because you know, it was better quality. We, Mm -hmm. we, we did what we always do where we nurture and we took care of people. Um, so I watch a lot of, you know, I'm a documentary, I just, so I just watch a lot and I've learned so much, um, about us and our contribution to the United States. And so now that we are in a generation or generations, cause it's not just mm-hmm. one, you know, it kind of started like, you know, with the baby boomers, you know, the, where, you know, Oprah was at. Now you got the millennials, like, you know, us, and mm-hmm. you know. And then you got the Gen Zers, you know, mm-hmm. that are, you know, we're just, information has shown us. So where I had to search out someone that looked like me that was doing something I wanted to do, it's right in your face now. So when I can see over and over again that this person started a business or this person runs this Fortune 500 company, Mm -hmm. this person invented this, this person Mm -hmm. invented this, this person is the vice president, this person is the first lady and they look like me, the sky's the limit. There's no limits. Right on. In 2023. So as a little black girl, (laughs) I know that I can do anything that I want to do and that I put my mind to because I see it on TV every day. I see the Beyonce's. I see the Alicia Keys. I see those people Mm -hmm. being artists, making music. I see we were all watching Oprah, but now we know this is how she got to where she got. And this is what she's doing. And the way that she's expanded her empire. Mm -hmm. Like when you see those things up close and impersonal and when you can see Maya Angelou on TV actually you're not just reading about her in a book but you can see her you can see where she sat down and she gave interviews and she talked about her struggles Mm -hmm. like you you can't help but to be inspired and it shows you like an example of what to do again the same way I follow my auntie's footsteps like I can follow my I can follow Maya Angelou's footsteps like you could, I can do that. You absolutely I can, could. I can uh, follow Katunji's footsteps. You could. I could do that. You could. And it's in our face every day. So that's the difference. Mm-hmm. And so now that I I see that and I know that, and you know my mom's friends and my friends, they own their own stuff. If they can do it, I can do it too. And I think that representation is the difference between now and thirty, forty, fifty years ago. Like. It's a tangible thing, yes. and it's not just something that I see on TV or that I'm reading in books. I know that person, right? Or I know somebody that actually knows these are real people. So I see them on TV every day. I can read about their life stories and see interviews that they gave, and it's not just a picture, you know. 
or right. a book that they read that I probably didn't <laughs> read all the way, you know what I mean? Or a book that they wrote, like, right. cause we had a lot of, you know, influential authors, but you know, it's one thing to read it. It's another thing to see it up close right. and in personal. And that gives you like a la- a level of inspiration, like, and to be able to like, not only read the words of Stacey Abrams, but to see her do what right. she does. It makes a difference. Yeah. It makes a difference. And it makes you, again, like I said, like, you know, I came in, I was a kid, you know, I did what I did. But once I started being exposed to these African-American queens, <laughs> fix your crown queen, and that's what I did. So it's it's totally different when you can see that person and you can touch that person or, you know, you can hear their words and, you know, in your ear, you can see it with your own eyes that yes this person is real yes this person does exist and yes i can be this and yes i can be that it's totally different so that's why a word because we ain't we not playing in 2023 (laughs) you can't just give me oh you only got this and this choice well no i don't i got many choices i don't have to do this i can do something else and guess what i can figure it out too like if i don't want to do that i can do too i have a daughter right now my oldest daughter This girl own a house. (laughs) She ain't got no job. (laughs) She ain't got no car. (laughs) She ain't got no driver's license. (laughs) I'm in the military, but she's been to more countries than me. (laughs) She's lived, actually lived abroad. Nice. Very nice. She ain't graduated from college. I don't think you have to anymore. She went to college and she was like, mom, this isn't for me. And I was like, okay, well, the lease is up in May because the the agreement was as long as you went to school. Right. I get BAH, you always going to have a place to stay. So I pay her rent the whole time she moved back to Maryland. I pay her rent while she was figuring out school. She figured it wasn't for her. And I was like, okay, well, lease is up in May. <laughs> and she was like, got you. And so she was like, you know what? I'm done renting. I want to own a home. And so she did it. Right. So on. I want her own home. And then she's like, you know what? I want to go abroad to Mexico and live. And she did it. Good and I'm her. like, man, she living my best life. But it's because, you know, when you grow up with an example and somebody that you can actually see doing, it's not just a figment of your imagination or just not somebody telling you something. You can be, uh, people told me that my whole life, you can be whatever you want to be. But when you see brown women that look like you, that talk like you, Mm -hmm. that's got locks like you Mm -hmm. or locks like you want, doing what it is that you aspire to do Mm -hmm. up close and impersonal. It changes you. It changes you. It makes you a different kind of person. You mm-hmm. carry yourself a different way. Like, you know, when I saw Master Chief, I was like, oh, it's <laughs> a wrap. Like, well, <laughs> senior, we need you to do. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Who? Who? Who's going to make me? <laughs> Who's going to check me, boo? Who's going to check me, boo? Fire me. <laughs> I love it. Right? I love it. Okay, fire me. I'm one of three people that can do this job, and I'm the one that agreed to do it. Wow. Fire me. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> you 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 act a little bit different. Love you it. carry yourself a little bit different, and you know that the sky's the limit. Like you know your value. I know my value exactly, and I know what I can do. Like I'm forty, about to be forty two years old. Get it? But I'm about to go back to college. Come on. And guess what? I'm a pledge. I ain't gonna say who I'm pledge. I'm gonna keep that on the low. I kind of want to know. I think I'm gonna go Zeta. You represent Zeta. Okay. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I'm about to go to an HBCU because guess Get what? It, come My on. baby goes to an HBCU on, and I HBCU. was like, you know what? That's what I'm talking you're about. Right, you right, sis. We about to do this. Um, so she, I was like, she doing it. So I'm going to go to one. I, it's not even something that I thought about until I asked her one day. I was like, hey, what college are you going to go to? She's like, yeah, I think I'm going to Howard. I was come like, on. Come on. I was like, why? She was like, because I want to be woke. It's like, you know what? Right. <laughs> what are we doing? I we gonna keep it black. I'm giving Love my it. keeping my money in the black community. I'm Love keeping it. my money with people that look like yes. me. I'm gonna support yes. people that look like me and I'm gonna pave the way for people that look like me. Like I'm gonna do what everybody else do, but we about to do it in a in a different fashion. Love so it. yeah, it makes a, a representation makes a difference. And representation is all in our face. We run in the game right now. Like Love it. Nobody could touch us right now. It's really crazy. It's kinda of scary. <laughs> It's kind of scary, but it's exciting at the same time because we doing it, doing it, we doing it, we, and we doing it real big. Like, <laughs> come through, Kamala. Like, what? When that look, that's that was a wrap. I was like, you know what? Obama was one thing. 
you know, but he's a man. We expect men to be able to, you know. Kamala Harris? Yeah. What? <laughs> Michelle Obama? That's love her. Love her. What? Love her. Like, when you read her story, when you... Becoming? Like, oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. like, oh, my God. Like, she she did... Like, when you... The stuff that She's she did... Ass. And everybody's like, oh, they relegate oh first lady. But our our first lady was about something. She's a badass. Our first lady did did a few things. Okay. Right? She wasn't just somebody's wife. Like, right. Let's keep it real. Right. Our first lady. That this she, lady's got a lot going for she her. She got a lot going for her. She and to be honest, she, she, she wouldn't have been the first lady had she not. Exactly. Because she met him in that high position. Exactly. And he knew he this he was a really smart man. <laughs> Yeah, Barack Obama is a he is a, yeah. beyond his years mm-hmm. in wisdom and in intelligence. But even as a young guy, you know how those he young knew a people. Good thing, he, he knew a good thing. He, when he just was, was at he just was already dialed in as a young person. That was inspiring too. Like when you hear about the stuff that he did as a young person, like in college before he went to college. Fresh, I, like what? <laughs> wow grassroots what were you doing me is in church what were you organizing i did see that movie yeah wow i was like wow like his story is crazy too like you read his story you like that and where he came from and you like what it's wild so yeah the sky's the limit like it is the sky's the limit so and that ain't even we going to space like bump the sky because like we don't already had a black female in space so i'm just saying (laughs) there's really no limits there's really no limits there's really no limits are you a no limit soldier is that what i'm kidding (laughs) actually i am i rep no limit to the fullest okay i rep them i was with them when they first came out i told Mm. you i knew i was gonna get the gangster out of you i knew you repped the set i knew it since the shaka (laughs) I wonder what's in the shock right now. Anyway. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I like his one album. No. Did you? I, I his, his CD was one of the first CDs I bought. You was just blowing money. You really I were. I was. You really were just I blowing was. money. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, since I spoke to your aunt before speaking to you, she did tell me to ask you about your retirement ceremony and your daughter doing the watch. Oh, yeah. So. Can you tell me I... a little bit about your retirement ceremony? So I was just, um, so my retirement ceremony was really for my family, which most of them are. (laughs) And it was important to me that, so my aunt had me in her retirement ceremony. Mm -hmm. So of course I took a cue from that. And then one of my really good friends, I consider her a sister actually. Um, she, another black female, you know. I should hope New so York, if you're calling her a sister. New York weekend. Um, so she retired and she had her sons, both of which who were in the Navy, recite the watch. So it's totally different when you read it. You know, people read the watch. They recited the watch to her. I would thought that was so dope. And I was like, so if any of my kids go into the Navy, like, <laughs> that's what you're going to do. By this time, I already knew I was already thinking about it because she, you know, <laughs> was in ROTC, whatever. Anyways... <laughs> So as soon as all that went through and I started planning, I was like, so, and I gave her enough advance notice. I was like, so you're going to do the watch at my retirement. <laughs> you so told you, her. You ain't asked her. <laughs> oh, no, no. I told her. I was like, and you need to learn it. So you're going to recite it. You're not going to read it because that's bogus. So I need you to be able to recite the watch. And she recited the whole and watch. And she recited the whole watch. Get so... It. And everybody was, she's just, she's such an impressive person anyways. Like, the way she carries herself, really don't know where she, I really didn't have, I don't feel like I had that level of professionalism when I was <laughs> an E5. I was really a thug as an E5. <laughs> Ma'am? I was really a thug. I've spoken to you for a little over an hour. Yeah. That thug didn't go away. It was, it was <laughs> it's filtered now. It's a little bit of filter right now. But, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so... <laughs> Um, so, and she rose to the occasion. She got one of my chief brothers. So that made, you know, they were stationed together and he was, of course, keeping an eye on her. Cause that's what we do with the anchors. That's what we do. We keep, keep an eye on each other. I'm like, please take care of my baby. Watch out for my daughter. Get it. He's like, Roger that sis. And he did that to the fullest. She did it. She was very impressive. And I was like, that's my daughter. So not only that, but I re-enlisted her at Get my it. retirement. My aunt did the, uh, the, 
chief, the, re, the chief retirement creep. And my husband, who was a retired chief, was the guest speaker. And I had my brother-in-law, who's in the Army. I didn't hold that against him. But wow. he's an Army warrant, though. Okay. He's an Army where He came in his full, you know. Of course. With the, with the hat and everything. Why not? That was the wrong uniform, but that's okay, bro. Look that's here. okay. I didn't need him all dressed up like that. Um, but you know what? I think you almost it. wear that uniform? No. I, I don't think I would have. Didn't you almost wear the army uniform, ma'am? No, I don't, don't make me rewind would've. this. This uh, I mean, this conversation. Not, not the one he was wearing. I wasn't looking to do all that. Uh, <laughs> you know, actually, I didn't even know that was a thing. Really, he really impressed me. But um, he came. He rose <laughs> the occasion. So it was a family affair because, again, family of service. Um, we're all connected to the military. Everybody showed up. My aunt showed up. My daughter showed up. Love my it. brother-in-law. My husband. Even though he gave me a little stress. But it's okay. It was good. It was a good time. Everybody had fun. It was great. Senior. So, yeah. Now, you have uh, roasted this man twice since I've been here. Who, for, my husband? For, I mean, you've roasted him a lot. But twice for the same thing. And now I have to wonder. You said he had 10, possibly even 12 days of sea time. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. He is a Navy man. Yeah. Okay. He how much got underway. Ma'am, how much sea time do you have? Yikes. It's over, I don't know the exact counter, but it's over four years at sea. Wow. Out of my 22-year career, which is really a feat because, and that's that's actual time underway. Mm-hmm. Sea duty is over, I had nine, ten years. Jeez. On sea duty at a, at a um, sea duty command, so I was yeah. PCS afloat, and I was at two type two commands, where you know I deployed or got underway. So actually, it's way more than four years because all my little days underway at my last command they count. <laughs> I don't know the exact thing. I have to look at Elliot after after the after the second deployment. Actually, that was my third deployment. After the third deployment, I just stopped counting. I just wanted to make sure that the check came because like, you get extra money. Yep. So I was just making sure that extra money was kicking in. So I would look at the LES and be like, oh, does that say 400 and Okay, we're good. Oh, oh, wait. I was at the seat in October, too. Can you add that? Okay, so we're good. Um, but, yeah. Hey, you have a kid that's a yeoman, right? Yeah. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. Wouldn't it have been lovely if she had messed up your seat? I had the opportunity to mess up your seat. So that's the one thing about my daughter that I love. I, I and I've met her. You're, I know what that's you're the one say. thing about the daughter she that does I have love. Work ethic. She is her work she's ethic. Very, she's very oh my god, yes. she is. I don't know where she get it from. <laughs> <laughs> I really was really caring, but sometimes I could be a little aloof. You know, I'm pretty sure I got ADHD for real, for real. Um, and so I forgot about a lot of stuff. I would just be like, oh, <laughs> please remind me. You know, I I know people's like, dang, she badly. I asked you about this five days ago. I know, but I just, <laughs> and she know when I say she knows her job, like she knows her job. So mm-hmm. I'm so proud of her. That's one thing. If she had been my yeoman, see, I wouldn't have had to ask no questions because <laughs> she would have been calling me senior. I mean, mom, <laughs> listen, I'm a, have you sign this paperwork right here because somebody messed up your counter, but I got you. I got you. Okay. All right. That's how that conversation, she'd be like, I got you. Calm down. I got you. Don't get, she'd probably be like, don't get upset. Don't get upset. I already got you. I already got you. You ain't got to worry about that girl. That's how she be talking to me. Like, y'all friends. That's why. Like, she my home girl. In my mind, I'd be like, do you have friends? <laughs> I know she got friends because I met them. We be talking about them all the time. But, oh, she called me a lot, though. She called me a lot. She's going to hear you say this. That's Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying anything that she doesn't know. That's that's the benefit of being a thug. I'm gonna say what I say. <laughs> you just gonna have to deal with it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Now you also have an aunt that I've already spoken to. Um, she was an IT, I believe. Yes, an IT senior chief. She actually retired as a command senior chief. Love it. Um, she was stationed down at Kings Bay, Georgia. If, um, if you don't mind my asking, and you don't have to answer this if you don't want, mm-hmm. what was your rate? I was a CT. A CT. N. So I came in as a CTO. What's, uh, what's, what are these letters standing for? So uh, CT stands for Cryptologic Technician. Okay. 
So, so you were a crip. I got you. I was right. a crippy. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. But <laughs> I was a crip. Uh, <laughs> dang, I didn't even know I was in a gang. <laughs> gang it was gang. like a gang. Gang, gang. gang, gang. It was like a gang because it was tight like glue. Um, <laughs> so I was a cryptologic technician. Um, when I first came in, I was um, in communications. The O stands for communications. Don't ask me why. It's the Navy. It doesn't it, make it sense. Doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Um, so the O stands for communications. Then they got rid of that rate, merged us with ITs. Uh. I, I was actually at IT for like two months until my paperwork came in that uh, said that I was going to become a CTN, which stood for networks. So still on the creepy side. Mm-hmm. Um, oddly enough, right you know, right before I got out, they was working on changing it from cryptologic to something else, and they've done that. They've succeeded in that, which. <laughs> It, you know, grand scheme of things, probably better, but I'm glad I retired as a cryptologic <laughs> technician that works. Now you're a crypt for life. And now I'm a crypt for life. <laughs> you know, information warfare, surface warfare, aviation warfare. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. But yeah, I was, I was a crippy. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah. And my auntie was mad at me, too. Until I mean, story. for a split second, y'all shared a rate. She cursed me out. She was like, why did you switch over to that rate? Oh. Uh, because all the stories you told me, I don't want none of that smoke. I'm special. I don't I, I don't think I can do anything but be special. Like I don't think they would take me in your community. They would try to, you know, you know, do something to me. Like, oh, well, you think you better than everybody else? Because I am. Like, why, why do I keep having to say that to people? I don't want to say it, but you're making me go there. Like Look, facts is facts. Facts right. is facts. Like you know, so yeah, but uh, you know, once I got that big Reenlistment bonus. She was like, "Okay, all right, good." She was like, "Cause you ain't gonna go nowhere." Cause at the time we only had five duty stations. They were all stateside, which is why I'm like a diamond in the rough. Because not only did I switch over to that job, but you know I did back to back sea duty, which is unheard of because okay. we don't go out to see at CTNs or we didn't go out to see, so it was unheard of to do back to back sea duty, and I did. Okay. And that's why I'm senior chief. Oh, okay. get it. Because, you know, what else are you going to do with somebody that... <laughs> what, back to back sea duty. What, back to back sea duty. I wish you would have not given me my star. <laughs> See how that would have worked out for you, Navy. Um, but, yeah, they took care of me. They gave me my good. star right away. Good. Good. No. <laughs> good for them and also good for you. Yes. <laughs> All right, senior. If you were conducting this interview from where I'm sitting, what question would you have asked you that I did not ask you? I mean, I don't think um, there's really a question that wasn't covered. Yeah, it was all there to kind of capture, like, you know, the experience of the black female. Mm -hmm. Like, those were, like, you know, the pertinent questions Mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't want to talk about, you know, and a lot of people don't ask. So I'm glad that you are doing this. So one told me about it. Of course, I was like, (laughs) yes, I'm on it. Um, So... Hold on. When your daughter told you, say that part. Yeah. When my daughter told me about it. So now I can edit the other part out. (laughs) Yeah. My my child, the one that's in the Navy, you know, she was like, hey, When your favorite told you? (laughs) I can't say that. She's a Virgo, man. Come on. Give me a break, man. I can't do that because the other one would call me out on it. The she other didn't one, hear this one. Girl, that other child is something serious. So I try not to say anything about favoritism and all that stuff like that. I try not to. You know, I just... I just graduate their strengths. Right and, on. You know, on. I celebrate their strengths and, you know, call them on their weaknesses. But I would never You're doing the right say thing. one's my favorite over the other because there's one that I get along with more than the other. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's that's about it. That's all about all I'm going to admit to. Um, you don't want the smoke, and I, I got that. Because I don't want the smoke because she really be trying to read me like she's my mom. <laughs> like she's my mom. I just be like... <laughs> no, I didn't ask you for all that. But okay, I'm going to let you say what you need to say. I'm going to say what you need to say. But you can't check me. I love both my kids. They're great. I have some great You're doing children. The, look, you did, you did right. You answered right. Yeah, I have some great children. That's what's up. So yeah, I only have two, so. It's working? It's working. <laughs> I did all right. Well, senior, is there anything you would like to leave our audience with? I just want to say to all the queens, because we're all queens, you really can do what you want to do. Doesn't mean that everything's going to be easy because nothing in life worth having is easy. And if it's too easy, you might want to run away from it because it might not be what's for you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just 
you know, keep being awesome and keep walking in your queendom and don't let nobody tell you what you can or cannot do. And, you know, I'm not saying be mean to people. I'm not saying have an attitude. But what I am saying is don't let nobody treat you less than whose you are. Don't do that. Come on. Don't do that. Because we all know who we belong to. Come we. On. He, you know, he's the only one that can chastise us. Nobody else. <laughs> Don't let these other people get you caught up. Don't let these other people make you think that you're not worthy because every one of us is worthy. Every one of us has what we need in our DNA to succeed and do what it is that we want to do and then some. So don't <laughs> let anybody tell you any different. Fix that crown. Shine on. <laughs> That's it. Love it, Senior. Love it. Thank you so much. And thank you for inviting me to your lovely home. This is a beautiful house I'm in, y'all. I I stay. I, I've had the privilege of interviewing some people with some very beautiful houses, and this is a very nice place. Thank you. It, it's in a nice neighborhood too. I feel safe. Yeah, I feel safe too. I be <laughs> leaving the door open sometimes. My husband's like, "Why you lock the door?" <laughs> My auntie was like, "You don't close the windows." No, th there's a fence. No one can look at. She's like, "Well, people hop fences. They not hopping that fence. It's a whole ditch on the other side." <laughs> Listen, we security minded around here, but you know, we ain't, we ain't got to worry about too, too much. You know? Love it. I love it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for making the time. Thank you yes. for agreeing to, to sit down and talk with me about your, your life experience, your story. Uh, you have a very important story and very important experiences to share. And thank you for sharing that with, with yes. us today. Yes. Uh, thank you. And to the audience, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up, y'all. Bye. And that concludes this episode of the Season Vet Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. And a special thank you to retired Senior Chief Sunita Price for sharing her story and taking the time to make this interview possible. Now, if you are or know a Black Lady veteran who would like to sit down with me and be a part of the show, please email me at seasonvetpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can call or text message me at 713 713-254-0970. You can also find, follow, and inbox me, The Season Vet, across all platforms of social media. At Real Season Vet on Twitter, at Season Vet Podcast on Instagram, at Season Vet Podcast on TikTok, at Season Vet on YouTube, Season Vet on Facebook. Y'all, I'm so out there, I'm even on Spoutable. That's at The Season Vet on Spoutable. Now, if you like what you hear, please like it, share it, rate it, and leave a good review on whatever platform you're listening to this on. And if you're hearing this episode on the day that it drops, then you're listening to it on September 11th, 2023, the 24th anniversary of Serena Williams winning her first major tennis championship, the U.S. Open. Thank you again for tuning in. And until next time, fall out.